Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I thought we would talk about fashion and traditional colors of dress. And I thought we would make it really specific and just talk about wedding dresses and traditional colors and things. Now I have some fun sketchbooks that belong to my children that are for fashion design. That's something that interests you if you're looking to get a degree in that. Um, there are sketchbooks out there that have the forms where you don't have to draw the anatomy. I will be doing a video later in the week showing tips and tricks for anatomy drawing and proportion, but for this video we're just going to talk, be talking about color and the tradition of color of wedding dresses around the world. And <laughs> the reason I'm doing this video is because tomorrow is my husband and my's 16th wedding anniversary. So I'm not sure what traditional gift that is. It's aluminum or adamantium or something. I don't know. We don't buy each other gifts. We don't care. But I just thought it would be really cool to talk about traditional wedding outfits around the world because they're not all white. So the white wedding dress, and we're just gonna flip through these sketchbooks. I don't know what my kids drew. This is gonna be so funny. So the traditional wedding dress of Europe was started in 1840 by Queen Victoria. And she decided on a huge white heavy silk satin deal. And the reason she chose it was because she wanted to show off her lace. Lace was super popular and it supported the English cottage lace industry and she had this like 18 foot long train and it was a huge deal. People just couldn't get over it and so less than a decade later the really really wealthy people, oh my god she taped on sequence, I love this so much, really really wealthy folks started wearing white. Now, there was a book, and it was called Gotti's Ladies Book, and they incorrectly claimed that the white gown was an ancient custom to reflect a bride's virginity and all this stuff, but most brides did not switch over to wearing white until decades later. It just wasn't affordable. Oh my gosh, this has so much... <laughs> Can you see the glitter on my finger? Oh no. Okay. But... That's, I mean, that's one country, that's one color. So in India, brides typically wear saris. And traditionally, I believe that came from the 16th century, from the Mughal era, and I apologize for my pronunciation. I never know if I'm doing things justice or butchering them. That's fun. Um, <laughs> they're traditionally red. So... In, in India, red sort of symbolizes new beginnings, passion, prosperity. Um, there's a Hindu goddess, Duga, and she also symbolizes new beginnings and feminine power, and she's red. And so brides sometimes start out with red, or, and they'll choose a different color or outfit for the reception. Um, funerals in India are typically white. So that's why they don't really wear white at their weddings. Um, white to them symbolizes peace of the soul and light and salvation. So in modern times, I believe to be more inclusive, they're moving on to other colors, gold, orange, other things. But traditionally it was red. Same with like China. These two books are both magma sketchbooks and I don't know if they make these anymore. These are two different styles and they have specs and things in the back to help with fashion design. But yeah in China um, they believe it began in the Ming Dynasty. <laughs> uh, unfinished bad guy. Oh that's the best. And it was reserved for the royal family, but there wasn't a concrete law about it, so other folks decided they wanted to wear red too. And typically wedding dresses in that era, they could be red, they could be blue, they could be green. Um, 
and the red represented celebration, good luck, happiness, prosperity. Um, now it's sort of a mixed influence, I would say, in China with the West and the East, and they'll wear like a white dress for the ceremony and then changing to a red one for the reception dinner. Pakistan brides wear red. Taiwan, it's a combination of red or white. Um, Japan, they have the, it's the Shirmoku kimono, and that is a pure white kimono. <laughs> this one's on fire. That, um, it sort of symbolizes purity and maidenhood. And sometimes they'll change into a red kimono after the ceremony for good luck. The Western dresses are very popular right now. I don't know if you can see these very fine outlines, but there's females on one side and males on the other. I don't think she's gotten very far, but we'll go through the spec sheets so you can see what some of these sketchbooks incorporate when you go to buy a figure drawing sort of sketchbook. Now, um, let's see. Vietnam's interesting. So in Vietnam, they wear an ao yai. It's like a silk tunic and that dates back to the 18th century during the Nguyen dynasty. And the bride would wear red, the groom would wear blue. And then the bride would have like three outfit changes. And in Vietnam, the guests have to wear bright colors to sort of celebrate the couple and not wear black or white because those are funeral colors and not wear purple florals because that's a color of sadness. In Morocco, the wedding dress colors are either yellow or green. And the yellow is supposed to scare away the evil eye. And then the green represents respect to the motherland and nature. And green is a symbol of good luck in Morocco. Um, South Korea, it's the hanbok, the traditional clothing, and that's, they wore that with a wonsam, which is sort of like a top coat, and this traditionally is like lime green with a red band that symbolizes uh, paradise, the blue symbolizes terrain, and a yellow band that symbolizes compassion, and... This originated, they think, from China, from the Tang Dynasty. Oh, these are fun. I'm not sure how much she colored in here, but she definitely purpled it up. Um, Spain, brides traditionally wear black. And this was to represent devotion to their partner until death, which may be rooted in Catholicism. I'm not too sure. And it's still worn with some brides who want to wear traditional outfits. A lot of them wear white dresses, something more modern. Um, Scotland, it's the kilt of their clans. Africa is a tough one. Like I could do a whole video on the wedding outfits of Africa because there's 250 different ethnic groups and they dress according to their region. And a lot of those are, they're bright and they're beautiful. I'm going to link in the description box if you want to continue down this rabbit hole of wedding outfits. Visual aids to go with some of this because they're absolutely incredible. The wedding attire from Africa is Nigeria, Ghana. They're just incredibly beautiful. This book also has guides in the back, spec sheets. Um, Malaysia, I believe it's purple. Now, my grandmother got married the day after World War II ended, and she wore a navy blue suit. My grandpa wore his navy blue military uniform, and those were the colors they wore out of respect. My mother wore a white dress. I actually took history of fashion in college, and my mom wore a white dress, and I wrote a whole paper on it where each portion of the dress design was influenced from what era, what decade, what country, and that was a lot of fun. My wedding dress was not traditional <laughs> in, in the way you think. I purchased a bridesmaid dress that was on sale. 
that was my absolute favorite color in the whole wide world. And that was the dress I wore as my wedding dress. And my husband wore just a black and white tuxedo. I'll post a photo um, on our Instagram showing what we look like for our weddings. But this is the color of my wedding dress. It's blue, it's absolutely my favorite color. So I want to say a happy wedding anniversary to my husband and I. I hope this video was interesting talking about color and fashion for weddings. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.